Hi everyone, good morning, this is Dan. Welcome to Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. They are greatly appreciated. This is the weekly forecast. It is for all signs, so I do speak in broad terms. You only need to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. If it doesn't fit or doesn't make sense to whatever you're going through in your life right now, that's okay. It may not be your reading. Don't worry, nothing's broken or wrong. Um, it is originally created for, wow, for the 2nd of April through the 8th of April, all right? Um, so, but it's not totally set for that date. If you're seeing it on a different date, by all means, utilize the reading whenever you're seeing it. I do believe readings are timeless and they will find us when we need them, not, you know, when they were originally created for. So... If you're watching this on a different date, but it still makes sense, by all means, utilize the reading. It is a weekly reading, so each of the three major cards, or the three main cards that I pull, represent for a day or two of the week. Some of you may experience only one of these cards throughout the week, or all of them, or and then some. So please, take what you need from this reading and leave the rest. For those of you that are new here, please check out the drop-down menu. I did any of my daily readings, or weekly readings for that matter. Um, in there is some housekeeping rules that I want you to think about when utilizing my channel. Um, what decks I'm using currently in the video that you're watching. How to follow me on social media via my Instagram page or my um, Facebook business page. Both of those places you can contact me for a private reading. Know that I will never reach out to you and contact you to sell you a reading. So if anybody ever tries to do that, it's probably not me. You have to initiate if you want a private reading. Um, those are done and payable via PayPal, and I send you a link to a video that you have access to for a year. It's a private link. Um, other things in the drop-down menu, uh, ways to support the channel. Uh, you can support the channel by a bunch of different ways. One is if you can join my Patreon and get the daily video early, a day early, to kind of prepare for the energy that's coming to make the most of it. Um, you can hit that thumbs up button, which is really important if you enjoy the content. And subscribe to the channel, hitting that notification bell so you get notified every time I do put up new content. I do put up daily readings, so there's always usually a video every day. Um, also, sharing the video out helps, letting your friends know about me. And um, uh, leaving me a question or comment also helps me greatly. I do love reading them, especially if the readings are resonating for you guys. They're a great source of validation for me as I do this work because sometimes I just feel like I'm speaking out to the ethers. For those of you that do watch regularly and comment, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. You guys are invaluable to me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. You know who you are. I do want to do a quick shout out to Vicky who called out yesterday from Patreon. Our underpinning energy for the first day of April with this um, deck, this new deck, was the very first part of the Major Arcana, which is, was the Fool. And I didn't even realize when doing the video yesterday that it was April Fool's Day. So it was kind of very much in sync that the Fool came out on April Fool's Day. So thank you for pointing that out, Vicky. I love when my um, viewers point stuff out that they see that I miss. So um, I have a lot of very perceptive people that watch the channel. And I love it when you guys point those things out because sometimes I'm paying attention to the bigger message and not the smaller details. So thank you for that. That was a cool um, synchronicity in yesterday's reading that I didn't even catch. All right, so let's get into these cards and see what they want us to know. See what Spirit wants us to know for the 2nd to the 8th. And away we go. That's the clarifying deck. Let's clarify that. So let's look at the bottom of the deck energy just for, you know, kicks. We have the Herophant. What a beautiful Hierophant card. Normally it's depicted as a man, but I love this because she looks like an angel and I love the color scheme. The Hierophant is about higher spiritual knowledge and associated usually with the sign of Taurus. It is a um, uh, major arcana card. So this could be our higher spiritual truth underpinning all of this today. So let's see what the cards are as they come out. But this is also, the Hierophant can be about, you know, Inst spiritual institutions, higher learning, societal beliefs, and where we fit within them spiritually. Um, it can be spiritual guidance or leadership coming from us or from within us. 
uh, being very connected to spirit in a very profound, strong way also because the Hierophant is a pillar card. So it's usually an unwavering kind of energy. So I like that we have this underpinning the un this weekly. So let's see what the cards are. For the beginning of the week, we have the Five of Cups. Five of Cups is oftentimes a card of disappointment, to be honest. But what I get from this, and I love all of this like mermaidy imagery in this in this deck in the Cups cards. To me, the Five of Cups here, it feels like although we might be feeling some sort of disdain or letdown, we are moving forward the way that she's sort of in the direction that her body is positioned is towards the future. And to me, it's like our cups may have spilled or a situation may not be perfect, but we're going to work within the realms of that situation and move ourselves forward. We're not going to allow the situation to stop us. Fives are always about transition, right? So we could be transitioning emotionally with the Hierophant sort of underpinning this. We could be listening to our spirit and the truth of our spirit, and that could be causing us a little bit of emotional unsettling. Because our spirit is going to know, the strength of the Hierophant is going to know the higher truth in all of this, even if, say, the 3D reactions or situations that we're dealing with aren't necessarily in alignment with us or how we feel emotionally. So, but that's not stopping us. I don't get that super sense of forlornness with this card. I get this sense of, oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, I'm still moving on kind of thing. Let's look at the midweek card. Midweek card is the tower, card number 16, Major Arcana also. Now, I'm going to say this. With the tower, the tower is usually something falling apart that's been built on faulty foundations or they, a situation that needs to come break away or, or fall away. Um, it can be a transformation. It oftentimes is a transformation that can be unsettling or unexpected. That's why people often fear this card, but... To me, the tower is always like an excavation or a realignment with, within a situation, be it a relationship, a job, um, uh, uh, a situation. It's like the situation wasn't suiting us ultimately, and we knew that to some degree, and maybe we held on for too long, and now it's kind of impossible for us to hold on any longer. So... With the Hierophant being the underpinning card, too, from the bottom of the deck, I feel like we have the strength to see our way through whatever this rearrangement is. It doesn't have to be an absolute... I mean, it can be an absolute destruction of, a, say, a relationship or a job or, or a, you know, a situation that we've been dealing with, but it can also just be a rearrangement. And with the Five of Cups leading this week, there could be a rearrangement going on within ourselves emotionally about how we feel or where we connect to a certain person or situation that enables us to bring about this change. Because the Five of Cups would be a sort of emotional transition or discord to whatever is going on around us. So if we're feeling like it doesn't feel right, and when I say feel right, it's because of the Five of Cups, but also that Hierophant has got my attention in the sense that we know what our higher truth is. We're connected to those answers. And so we need to follow and stay stable in that higher truth and hold on to that rather than what, say, a situation or a relationship or a person may be providing to us right now because what we're realizing is what they're providing maybe isn't enough. It's not stable enough. It needs to be changed. Um, it needs to shift. We need to roll with the changes. The other thing that I love about the Tower card that I always say that you guys know about is that let, it's got this theme of let go or be dragged. So, in other words, if we fight against this Tower moment, this shift, this change, this rearrangement, we end up suffering more than we have to, ultimately, is my feeling. And so we don't want to do that in our world. Um, we want to flow with those changes. The Five of Cups indicates that we might possibly be able to because of the transitory nature of the Five and the emotions being water. Water is mutable and, and moves around things, right? So there is some flexibility, I believe, that we have here, even though things may be rearranging or changing in ways that were unexpected. Now let's look at the end of the week card. Okay, we have Messenger of Earth. Now, I'm assuming because it's Messenger, I'm thinking that this is the Page of Pentacles. Let me just double check that because Colette Baron Reed has decided to change the names of the suits. So let me just look at that and make sure that it's not the Knight. Um, hold on one second. I gotta just double check, but I'm assuming because 
messages can be king and queen. Oh no, this is the knight of pentacles and page of earth. So these pages, is, pages are pages, messengers are knights. So the knight of pentacles is a very stable, slow, steady energy, right? It is very grounded. It is associated with the earth signs of Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is not going to make any rash decisions. Let's just say that. It's a very solid, stable energy. What I do notice and what's pulling my attention in this card is these two chakras here, these markers on the chakras, the heart and the sacral, right? Or the solar plexus, I'm sorry. It looks like she's listening to her heart, which would be that Hierophant energy and some of that Five of Cups energy in the early part of the week, and to her solar plexus, which is how we move through the 3D world how we pursue the goals that we want. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is going to be discerning, grounded, practical. Um, so if there is something that is rearranging in the midweek for us or something that we're not feeling right about in the early part of the week, this Knight of Pentacles towards the end of the week is going to be like slow and steady wins the race. It, the tower has not like uprooted us completely. It's actually solidified us because we have this earth card here, which means we're more grounded, more centered, more practical, more aware about maybe how to navigate things in the 3D. It's not the fastest of energies. I love that it's, this is depicted by a woman too, and I'm, I'm just, this deck is beautiful. Um, but it does allow us to take slow steps forward with maybe new information or new awareness or a new way of um, looking at things from a more logical or practical um, viewpoint that allows us to move forward um, productively towards whatever our new changes are, our goals are, our desires are. We might be doing so slowly, but we're doing so sure-footedly, right? We're taking each step as it comes, making the decisions maybe in the moment, really checking in with our higher spiritual self with that Hierophant under this, and allowing that to be the indicator as we move out of this week into the next. The Earth's uh, cards or pentacles are going to be about production or um, 3D manifestation, money, jobs. Uh, you know, they're, it's a very strong energy, right? In the sense that it's very grounded and 3D based, very physically based. So the decisions we should be making by the end of the week surrounding whatever this shift or changes will be steady. And also, I'll say this, this Knight of Pentacles does tie into the Earth energy of that Hierophant being this, you know, associated with the sign of Taurus. So throughout this week, we need to kind of go back, if we find ourselves needing to go back to what our higher spiritual values are through any changes or emotional shifts that we might be feeling, we do so with a strength, a wisdom, and an ability to by the end of the week, take practical action towards moving forward step by step, um, decision by decision. I hope that makes sense. So we don't want to rush this, in other words, is my feeling with this Knight of Pentacles at the end of the week. Now here is the Rose Oracle card. This is the Sacred Union, beloved within inner and outer relationships. Huh. This, this sacred union card just kind of threw this whole reading into like a, a relationship state for me. Because the five of cups oftentimes is, cups being the emotions, you know, this could be surrounding a relationship for the majority of you, is my feeling, just because the sacred union card has come up. It feels like we need to care for ourselves and put ourselves first, the way that she's sort of nurturing and holding herself, herself in the middle of that card. Um, amidst the blooming of roses, that to me speaks to this idea that, you know, even though things might seem like they're shifting or changing, we're actually growing in this process. We're becoming stronger with the Hierophant and the Knight of Pentacles here. We're able to honor whatever is going on, even if it's not completely in alignment to what we wanted or what we thought we were going to get. And we're able to continue to move forward and honor the changes that are happening, similar to like what I said with the Tower card is, is this idea of let go or be dragged, you know, like honor whatever is going on or shifting or changing, even if it's not the most comfortable or the thing that we thought we wanted. 
um, honor that and, and do so by honoring yourself and honoring sort of even the sacred union that's between you, your soul, your body, your mind, your spirit, right? Your emotions and how you feel. And then making those decisions practically from that place, taking steady steps in solidarity or in, in strength, in groundedness. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is very dependable energy. So we can depend on ourselves even through this transition of whatever may be taking place. Let's look at the clarifiers. We have the Seven of Cups. So this is emotional confusion. This ties in a little bit to that Five of Cups in the early part of the week. This could be a little bit of fear about making the right decision around a relationship. Should I allow this to change if I make this decision or this commitment? Does it um, kick off this potential tower change? Ultimately, as long as we're like sort of honoring the sacred union of whatever it is that we are deciding or dealing with, we should be good, is my feeling. Again, there's some emotional aspect to this that um, could feel um, challenging, but we have the strength, the fortitude, and the ability to face it head on and make the correct decisions moving into the, the, the future. The next card is the Magician, Major Arcana. This is as above, so below. This is about having all of the assets that we need to redefine, recreate, or reposition ourselves in a way that is empowered, that is creative, that is um, exciting. You know, this is associated, I think, with Aries energy, I believe, and that to me is about being a little bit action-oriented, split-second decision-making. We do see the uh, Knight of Pentacles, so our decisions are going to be made practically, but the, I do get this feeling that with the Magician here, they will be creative, smart, and lead to our success, ultimately. There's a clarity from this Magician that comes out of this Seven of Cups, is my feeling. We go from this, uh-oh, which one do I choose? Which one do I commit to? Does this feel right? Are they going to be mad at me? Whatever the questions are that are causing us the confusion, we get to this play, place of, aha, I have the answer. That's what I feel like that magician is saying right there. And then acting upon that answer as we move forward. And I will say this with the sacred union card and the magician standing there sort of by himself. Again, it brings me back to this place of honoring the self above all else within whether it's a situation. For some of you, it's definitely going to be a relationship. Honoring ourselves and acknowledging or exalting ourselves and understanding that we are the magician. We have the capacity to change this. This is card number one of the major arcana. Ones always make me think of the self. So we are empowered even if we don't feel as though we are at times throughout this week. The last card is the sun. I will take it. Associated with Leo energy, right? But it's probably the most positive card of the entire tarot deck. The sun is about a new day dawning, right? The truth coming out. It's a resounding yes in most situations. If, you're, if your question this week is, should I, shouldn't I? You're going to know by the end of the week, especially with the magician there. There's a sense of clarity, a rebirth that's happening. And I think that with these clarifiers... That Knight of Pentacles at the end of the week is sort of like, I feel like this Magician and this Sun card come during that tower or post-tower as we lead into the Knight of Pentacles. Because once we begin to realize the assets we have at our disposal, the creativity that we have within us, the action that we can take, the Sun lights the way. The Sun brings us the truth. The Sun gives us like energy or reinvigorates ourselves to move forward in our truth. And that Knight of Pentacles kicks in and we utilize that truth to um, to take action and to move forward in practical ways. So I do think that like we do get clarity by the end of this week around whatever it is that we're dealing with, but we need to honor it for um, the sacred aspects that the situation may have, even if it's causing us a little bit of trouble or discomfort, right? There's a reason for it, ultimately. Let's go to the grounding stone. And this is just a principle or an idea that we should be grounding in during this, throughout this week. And reminding ourselves going back to ah interesting i'm talking a lot about the self the grounding stone is honor so i do think that there is a honor of the self here that needs to happen um i almost feel like i want to say if there's some of you that have been denying something some sort of truth 
uh, some sort of um, wisdom that is within you that you've maybe been aware of or it's been kind of in the back of your mind at the bottom of your heart wherever you keep that wisdom that hierophant in higher connected intelligence it's about honoring that this week listening to that and allowing that to move you through it's about honoring the sacred within right the sacred union card is that what it's called the, the, the sacred union card exactly we have a sacred union not only with ourselves but also with you know the world around us um how we operate in that to me it feels like whatever is going on whether we feel like we're being betrayed let down or or we might be a little bit confused we are going to honor ourselves, the situation, and the, the union of whatever it might be as being sacred, seeing the truth and the magic and the spirit in that, and then moving forward in that um, towards a, a new beginning or a better position um, with that Knight of Pentacles. We may not be moving so quickly, but that's okay. I will say this, the sun and the magician are a little bit faster. Energies are certainly a bolt of clarity there that we probably need or um what's the word it's richly deserved is the word that i'm hearing in my head richly deserved right so <sighs> paying attention to these things and, and and again like i said connecting to the sacredness even in the annoyances <laughs> finding what is sacred within these situations how they transform us how they change us and don't like you know, just write them off as, you know, oh, this is a pain in my butt. I don't want to deal with this. Oh, my God, this is changing. And get all caught up in the drama, the worry of it all. But actually take action and move forward from a place of honor and understand that whatever transitions are taking place, they're allowing you to see the greater picture, the larger whole, what you deserve. So honor that aspect of this, too. And... Treat everything as if it is sacred, even if it's something that's outside of our control or giving us trouble. It's going to lead us to this strength of purpose and understanding that we greatly deserve and need. That is your reading for the week. I hope that makes sense. Please tune in as the cards change daily. We will be reading on top of these layers. Um, please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this reading. Subscribe to the channel. Join my Patreon. Hit that notification bell. Share the video out and leave me a question or comment. It should be a powerful uh, week. Have a wonderful day and take care. Bye-bye.